Perfect. Okay, thanks for the intro. My name is Sunny Barr. I'm a counselor here. I think I know a few of you. And today we are doing Plan My Schedule web registration. So how many of you have done that before on your own before? Okay, so great. So I'm basically going to be going through Plan My Schedule. With, there, are, there are other ways to register, but I think that just confuses things. So I'm just going to focus on that one. Um, let's see. Also, if you still feel like you need some help, maybe figuring out what to register for, um, or just maybe this was not insightful enough for you, come in and set up an appointment with the counselors. We do appointments most afternoons, and you can have a set time just one-on-one -on -one to kind of plan that out. If you're starting to get a lot of credits, you might want to do a graduation application as well. So if you're getting halfway through your degree, I know that sounds early, but that's what we recommend that you start doing that. Okay. Also, if you have questions, just raise your hand, and I want this to be interactive where you guys can just say, hey, I didn't understand that. Can you explain that differently or something like that? Um, so don't feel uh, shy to raise your hand. Um, before I get into that, we do not have the new brochures. This looks familiar. This is from fall. We don't have the new ones out yet, but this, these should be coming out any day. So make sure you grab one of these. All this information is available online now, and it's pretty up to date. But you really want to do a lot of planning before you get to the point of actually registering. Okay. Um, and then the catalog as well. If you have individual classes, maybe in the AA, and you're not like, what is Communication Studies 101 versus 220? That's all in this catalog here, which is also available online. So let me show you where to find the catalog. So everyone should know this website, I hope. So uh, this is just our Spokane Falls website. And under catalog, if you go down here to the 2010, this is our new edition. Um, and then I catalog. There's a million ways to get there. You'll find it. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Course descriptions. So for example, communication studies. Let's do that. Or let's just go to chemistry. This could tell you what the different subjects are and kind of a little more in depth about each one before you make your decision. Okay. So I will get out of there. Okay, I do have, everything that I'm talking about is in a handout, but I don't want to give you the handout now because I want you to pay attention to me. So, but when we're done, go ahead and grab one of these on the way out. Um, and like I said, there are two ways to register. I'm going to focus on one because I think it's the best way to do it. Um, so on the front is using Plan My Schedule, and on the back is web registration. We're just going to be talking about Plan My Schedule. Okay, any questions so far? Okay. So, to register. So let's say that you've done all the work, you know what classes you want to register for, and you're ready to register. So you go to plan my schedule slash register and click on that. And that brings up this new window right here. So there's a few different things there. Uh, one is when you can register. So uh, 6.30 in the morning is when it'll start on the 15th and the 17th. So if you get up early in the morning and register, you're almost guaranteed to get what you want, okay? So that's really important <laughs> because believe it or not, a lot of people will wait weeks or even months before they register. So um, it's really in your interest to do it um, that day as early as you can. It does close down at nine o'clock at night and reopens again on Saturday. No, it's all online, so you should be able to access this from anywhere that you can get internet access, and you should be able to do this on your own, okay? Um, so there's a few different things you can look at here. Um, here is the w part that I'm not going to talk about, how to register with the other process. You would go there and you would sign in, but I'm not going to go into that, okay? Um, if you need some instructions, you can always click on how to use Plan My Schedule, and that's pretty similar to, I think it is actually a, pretty similar to the handout that we have waiting for you when you leave. So there's that. Okay, 
So you can see it's already set for winter at SFCC. So you don't really need to do anything unless you're changing campuses on us. So, uh, and then also note this part right here, HP or Y, so under course numbers followed by HP or Y, those are not on our campus. And I'll show you uh, how to not register for those classes. So, okay, so winter SFCC hits select courses, okay? So this brings up a time grid. So for those of you that have other obligations that interfere with your schedule, this is where you can go in. For example, if you have a job or you can only take weekend classes. So let me show you how that works. Let's say you start your job at 4.30 or 5. Then you can block out all these times here, for example. And it'll only search for times that are different than those. Um, let's say, and to clear that, just go to clear in the corner. Let's say you can only take weekend classes. So you'd block out Monday through Friday, and it'll only search for weekend classes, okay? Which would include online classes and things like that, okay? So let's just leave that completely blank for now. And let's see what else is over here. Okay, we'll come back to that. So once you're here, just go to view course list, this bottom here, and click on that. So that basically brings up this is the old one, but it brings up our updated um, class schedule for the winter. For the most part, it's accurate now. So you can actually access this now and go in and start planning out your schedule. So, but uh, there's always things that get confusing. So as you can see with the counting, H's and P's. So we don't want to take H's, P's, or Y's, or anything like that. But you really got to pay attention to some of those symbols. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just grab a couple classes and show you how it works. Um, a class that most people doing the AA have to do, for example, is English 101. So, so typically after English 99, you would think that it's English 101, but it's not. There's an ampersand symbol in English 101, which alphabetically throws it down here right after 259. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna click, just click once on English 101, and it, what it did is it put it up in the bank there on the top left-hand side, English 101 with the ampersand, okay? We grab a couple other, actually I'm just gonna grab that for now, but you can pick five classes and put them in the bank, and then hit Submit Selections, and that will show us all of the English 101 offerings. Okay, I'm just gonna go over this for a sec because this kind of details a lot of things that we need to go over. Okay, so the course is English 101. The item number is how we differentiate that class from other classes. That's sometimes an important number to have. Uh, the days and the times. So the top one is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, for example, and then those are the times that it's offered Next is the building. You know, we're boring around here, so we just have numbers for buildings, right? So that's in building 24, and that's the classroom. Really not that important when you're registering, but, uh, uh, and then the instructor, if there is one yet, and how many seats are available. Right now, since we have an open registration, all the seats are available, okay? But you'll see those dwindling once it starts. And then there's always footnotes, typically, that you have to really be careful and check. So I'm going to click on this footnote here and it says basically that you need to have passed English 99 with the 2.0 or tested into English 101. So if you haven't tested into English 1 or taken that class yet, you would need to do that or you'd be prevented from registering for that class. Okay, so always check the footnotes. Okay, so um, point out another thing with, has anyone here ever taken a learning community? Anyone? Okay. So this might be a good chance for you to do this. A learning community is typically uh, two or three classes taught together, usually with English 101 or sometimes English 102. So it's, we get really good feedback from students, especially new students with learning communities, and sometimes they have a theme. Like in the past, we've had uh, English 101 paired with a, a psychology or maybe another philosophy, and it would be 10 or 15 credits. And 
what they do is they shrink it down into a nice block of time so the instructors can be a little more creative what they can do. You'll still get 10 or 15 credits just like any other class and you really get to know the other people in your classes. So that's something you might want to look for, for in the future. So there's a learning community right here with English 101 and Humanities 224 which is a film class. I believe it's the foreign uh, or it's called Contemporary Global Cinema. And so that is a learning community. So when I click on English 101, it typically would light up both of them, but it didn't for some reason. Let me check the footnote. Okay. So it's linked to 1569, which is Humanities 224. Typically the computer would light those both up. So if you signed up for that learning community, and it says over here learning community, you would be registering for 10 classes. It's also a D. So for those of you working on your associate's degree or some other degrees, everyone has to complete a diversity intensive, a global course, and one writing intensive course. So with this, with this um, learning community, you'd be getting 10 credits, English 101, plus the humanities, plus a D course. Okay, for 10 credits. Okay, so one other thing with this, and this doesn't, usually does not happen in learning communities, but you'll notice it says hybrid class. Okay, so we have lots of different classes. We have traditional in the classroom classes, so if like the top one, for example, was Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, I think. We have online classes. Has anyone here taken an online class before? Okay. We have a hybrid which is basically uh, an online class and a traditional class. So you might go to class once or twice a week and the remainder of that class is online after that. So that's a good, that's a good option for people that have a busy schedule, maybe working and that, and that don't want to be completely online because that can sometimes be frustrating, but can have that teacher and student access at least once or twice a week. Okay. So that's what a hybrid is. We also have telecourses as well. Um, let me see if there's any in here. I don't see any in there for English. Okay. But for the majority, and here's an online class right here. Okay, so it just says you're arranged because you don't technically meet at any official time. Okay. So that's, let me grab another example of a class. Um, let me grab a math class. Okay. So let me grab calculus, math 151, submit selection. So it's going to pop up all English and math now. So let me go down to math. And there's a footnote. Okay, so always check the footnote. And the footnote is going to say basically that you've had to have taken pre-calculus, okay, to get into there or test it in. Okay, so if you did not meet those prerequisites and you went to register, two things would happen. It would either let you accidentally register, which would be probably a bad scenario when you showed up to class because then your instructor would, say, would, would catch it typically. Or it would just prevent you from registering. Okay, some of you might also find a situation where for whatever reason you've dropped back in math or whatever, it might ask for an access code. Or if you've been put on a wait list or something like that, you might get an access code too. So that's a possibility. Um, let's see what else here. Can you take like, what is that, a con test or whatever? They have a prerequisite you have to have that earlier math class in order to take a test to see if you Yeah. Um, there's a, yeah, there's a couple ways to get into classes. Either you test in or you take the class that's required before. So like if you want to do English 102, you have to take English 101. That's required. But for English 101, you can test into English 101. Um, did I answer that? Yeah. Okay. Um, that made me think of something else. Um, okay. So let's see. We got math. Let me grab one more class. Bio 160. Okay and hit submit selections. So let's say I want to take those three classes. Let's see, where did math go? So personally I would work backwards because there's only one math offered. So I would 
know that that's basically going to dictate my schedule because the math is only at 9.30, okay? And we're just assuming that I'm smart enough to get into that one, okay? So after that, there seems to be a lot of biology options and a lot of English, so this should be pretty easy. So let's say I'm a morning person and I'm going to do English at 8.30 right here with Carlson. And then I've got math 151 at 9.30 to 10.30. Um, let's say I just want to look at that real quick. You can go to this bottom thing here, display my schedule, for those of you that more, are more visual. And it'll kind of show you our, our plan so far. So 8.30, English 101, and 9.30, uh, math 151. Now some of you are thinking, am I going to have time to get to my math class because they're back to back? Uh, technically, you will have 10 minutes. So it's, it's 8.30 to 9.20, and then you have 10 minutes to get to your math class. So it should not be a problem. Um, I'm going to go back, and now I'm going to pick a biology class. So let's say I'm going to do the 10.30 here. Now notice when I clicked on Biology 160, it lit up another class. Okay, that's the lab, typically. So uh, sometimes the computer misses that. So make sure that you notice that your lab's actually at a different time than your lecture, and I'll show you what that looks like there. So there's a visual of what that'll look like there. So this is a good place to kind of play around with your schedule. Maybe you like to have all your classes all together. Maybe you like a little break in between them, um, whatever. So, and obviously if it was an online class, it wouldn't go into this little grid here. So um, let me make sure I've got everything. Any questions so far on that? No, okay, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, you will need, okay, so when you find the classes that you want, so let's say I'm going to do those three. I think I lost them, so I'll just pick three more. Let's just do English and Bio, okay. Then you go to Register. And here you'll put in your student ID number, which you should all have memorized, and then your PIN number, okay. So if you've forgotten your PIN number, you can request that online, or you can go down to admissions, or you can come in and we'll, we'll get that to you. That's pretty easy to do. Um, you will need that. It's either a four or a six digit number. Then you hit register. They'll ask you sometimes a few demographic questions, um, things like that, and then you hit finish, and then that's it. And then you can print your schedule. Uh, you can always go back in and change things, too. So you're not set in stone. I mean, if you're registering in November, classes don't start till January. So you might change your mind or things might open up. Um, they might add more sections. You might go in and work through my math test and go to the higher level math. So you can always go back in and change things. To change things, um, you can basically just do what we did and let's say you want to add a math class. So you go in and add the math class, and then you'll want to delete your other one. So once you get to the very end, there's an opportunity for you to delete that class. So for a second, you'll have five more credits, and you just delete it. So um, that's really about it. Any last? Yes. So we can go in right now and set it all up. We just can't hit the register button? Exactly, yeah. So you can go in, and, and you should plan all this out, what you want to take. And uh, if you register on your day, you'll probably get what you want. You know, some classes are tougher than others. Um, so you'll probably, like Bio 160 goes real fast because all the nursing students want that. So um, yeah, that's basically it. Any other questions? Okay, if you have less than 30 credits, uh, Kiki, could you raise your hand, please? Um, we want to get your student ID number so we can remove your block so you're good to go on that date. And you're always welcome to set up appointments with us as well if you just need a little bit of help figuring out what's the best direction to go. Okay? I think you're okay. All right. Thank you very much.